Well, hi everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, wherever you're watching me from. My name is Sally Roper, and I'm coming to you from Ocho Rios in Jamaica. Um, I've just come home from playing a bridge tournament, a small um, local club tournament, and so it's four o'clock in the afternoon, and I have a kiln to unload because I have some pieces that I need to deliver tomorrow. So most of this kiln load is full of mugs for uh, for a hotel in Montego Bay. And it's really the top few pieces that I'm really excited to share with you. So this video is going to be a quickie, um, probably around seven, eight minutes long, which is unusual for me because I'm so long winded and go into such detail of all of the glazing and everything that I do. But I thought I would just share this with you quickly and uh, show you the pieces that I'm looking at, which are at the top of the kiln. So it is now um, 101 degrees. So I should be able to, uh, to not have to wear my gloves, but I have them handy uh, just in case. And what I also have are the notes uh, that I took that give you, um, that gives me the detail. Reason is, is that um, one of the pieces, or two of the pieces that are in here, I'm recreating from uh, a cup that I had in my studio that a customer really liked the look of. So I'm, I'm scared to open my kiln and I'm, I'm making this take a whole lot longer than I need to because I'm just nervous to see what's in here. Uh, okay, so we're just gonna get at it. Yay, it worked. Anyway, all right. So the first thing I'm gonna show you are these mugs. You've seen me do these before. This is with uh, Laguna 391 clay. And um, in as much as that it looks brown when you throw it and brown when you bisque fire it, it goes this lovely, very dark brown, almost black clay and I love to show it off because it is it is just beautiful and so all of the pieces that I make with this clay I always show some part of the clay I cannot hide it in the um, in in the glaze it just wouldn't be fair so these are uh, when I made them after I trimmed them I coated them on the inside with a B mix slip uh, both the B-Mix and the Laguna 391, they all uh, shrink at the same rate, so I wasn't worried about compatibility. Anyway, this is um, Jess Chun Blue, and it is pretty true to Jess Chun Blue on the inside where I did the, uh, I did the slip. And then on the outside, uh, I, I get this mottled speckled. It's always done that with this clay. And I really like it. And so anyway, I have a bunch of these um, in the kiln and I'm just gonna quickly take them out. So this is uh, Laguna 391 clay, uh, B-Mix slip on the inside and Jess Chun Blue, which you can get from Clayscapes Pottery. Um, yeah. So I have, um, I have five of those on this level. I think I have nine in total. So um, here I have my witness, my witness cone. So now um, I fired my kiln. Uh, I set it on my own program, my own ramp and uh, ramp and, and um, uh, my own ramp. I'm pulling a brain fart, so I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, uh, these are as you can see on there, they're cone five. You can see the five here and the six here. And so I only do two cone packs. This is what it looks like um, before I start. So this becomes this. And I have clearly, because you can see it's almost a full bend of the six, I went to a full six. So I did fire to 2188 and I had a 13 minute hold. Again, uh, I think I talked about this in my last opening is that um, about a month ago, I replaced my elements and they were specially made for me here in Jamaica because our current runs at a different cycle and uh, necessary adjustments were made. So now my elements are running perfectly and they're following the graph line and everything to the T. So I have always added a little bit of a hold 
Uh, I like to fire my stuff to five and a half and I added a 13 minute hold at the end. And so what that has done is the heat work has brought me to a full six, which really at the end of the day isn't bad. Um, all of the glazes that I have look really great at a cone six and uh, B mix five will behave at cone six. I wouldn't want to take it too much higher than that or it will start to bloat or so I've heard. I've never had that problem because I've never taken my temperature beyond a six. So this is what um, this is what I'm excited about to show you. So let me show you. Um, this is what I was trying to recreate. So this is what my client saw, and what it was is uh, four layers of um, of blue of Amico's blue rutil. Then two layers of Mako Light Flux, about an inch on the rim, and then a little bit more than that, maybe an inch and a half of Ancient Jasper. And then I did Ultra White. Uh, there's the notes that I took on what I did, and there's Ultra White on the inside. And so she saw this and she said, I love this combination. So um, I made some lamps and I made them oversized for her. So not only am I used to doing my lamps at about five inches wide by nine inches tall. This was six inches wide and 12 inches tall. So I took it quite a bit larger than, than I was supposed to. Didn't think I could, but I did. But this is what I was trying to emulate. So with that being said, I think I did a pretty good job. So here's the original. And this is what I've tried to recreate. So this is a, this is a, a much, much bigger version of what you're used to seeing. I, I make a lot of these and I've carved the initials of the person who's to get them on the inside, but a lovely hummingbird, which is um, which is typical of Jamaica. In fact, it's not a hummingbird, it's a doctor bird because of the two long tail feathers that look like a stethoscope, which is why it's called a doctor bird. And uh, the blue rutile came out really nice. And, uh, and I And what I did was at the end of it, because it's got holes in it, it's a, it was a difficult process. So I painted four coats of blue rutil over the entire piece on the outside only. Then I did my two inches of light flux and I did about three and a half inches of ancient jasper, which is the same as what I did on that cup. Then what I had to do is wait for all of that to dry and I took some Mark wax on and I, and I completely covered the outside because how can you color the inside while you've got holes. And so anyhow you pour it in, of course, it's just gonna come streaming out the holes. So what I ended up doing was waxing the entire piece and then I could dip it into, this is opulence eggshell. And I was very careful on the rim uh, when I waxed it because I didn't wanna leave any, any blank spots. I, I'm really proud of the job I've done on this. It has come out magnificently and it's exactly what the client wants. It is, um, it is spectacular. Uh, there's the uh, the inside, by the way. Um, it's, it's just a hollow form. So when I after I had waxed the entire outside, I just dipped it into my bucket of eggshell and held it there for about two or three seconds, and then I took it out. And when when I could reverse it, I just turned it upside down and dipped it in to get the top part. And uh, and it's it's just perfect. I'm really really pleased with that. And all of my. Um, <coughs> All of my lamps that I sell come with a saucer, so that's also in here. And this is, um, oh, I think I did three heavy coats of blue rutile because most of the time this saucer is gonna stay hidden. And I did three heavy coats on the outside. And so this will just sit on top of, sit on top of the saucer like that and people can put candles inside. And, um, and so it will catch the melted wax. So um, uh, this is just a big winner. I'm really, really happy with this. All right. So this is the uh, a next one I did for her. And, um, and it, it was the same process, different initials, because it's going to a different person. And um, anyway, it, this is, so I don't need to talk too much more about this. I don't have the saucer for this one because the one I made was way too big. So I had to remake them. And again, you can see on the rim, it, it did really nicely. So again, applied all the glaze. I did Mark's wax on, covered the entire piece, and then I dipped it 
on the inside to get the white coating on the inside and uh, that's opulence eggshell. So we have Mako, Amico and opulence all represented in this one piece. And so you can tell they play very nice together. All righty. And the next piece is, oh man, is this ever gorgeous. And I have the saucer to go with this one. This is done in opulent sea spray, which really likes cone six. You get that speckled look of, of, um, of reduction. It's a reduction look glaze. And so um, anyway, let me try and get the, let me put this down. I don't want to drop it. And let me show you this properly so that you can see, maybe if I turn this a little and get it out of the, no, I'm just trying to figure out about the glare. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, anyway, um, you can see the mottled look, which is what you get from reduction firing. And so this is a reduction look glaze. It loves cone six, I must tell you. My best results uh, with, uh, with sea spray and eggshell. Uh, any of the reduction looks from, um, from Opulence, they love cone six. So that's that. And then this is the... This is the lamp that's gonna go on it, and you can see the two pieces together. Perfect fit. So, what did I do with this one? This one is a full dip in, uh, in opulent sea spray. And then I did a two inch double band of Mako Light Flux and then I did um, two little bit slightly wider bands of Indigo Float, which are both by, uh, no, sorry, Mako does the Light Flux and Amico does the Indigo Float. And this is it. So I'm really happy she wanted a blue-green combination and I don't think I could have presented it any, bit, any better. And you just get this slight drip that's gone down between the pineapples, one on each, each one. I'm really, really happy with uh, with how this turned out. This is uh, this is uh, this is a happy day for me. Um, as you say, when you're trying trying new things or trying to recreate or replicate something that you've done in the past, uh, you never know exactly if you're going to be able to do it. But I, I, as I say, I take detailed notes, and I just followed my notes, and I got the same. Uh, they turned out exactly as I expected them to turn out. So I'm really happy about that. And the last of what I have in here that I'm going to share with you I just um, the last of these uh, these mugs like I said I made nine of them so I don't need to go over the details of, of these mugs and then I have 50 of um, of these mugs um, they're for Round Hill, so I hand drew using um, um, designer liner, and I wrote Round Hill and drew the pineapple, and then I just dipped this in Opulence Ultra White, and, uh, and they're perfect. So that's it. That's all I have to share with you today. So if you like this video, which is unusually short for me, but there wasn't much to show you, I just wanted to share the results and the surprise and the and the joy I guess because they turned out exactly as I had hoped and as I had planned which is win-win. Uh, so thank you very much for joining me today and if you like this video please hit the like button. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel I invite you to do that as well and feel free to leave any comments. I love reading your comments and people share congratulations when I share things that are going on in my life, my personal life and um, and whatever so it's just it's just great and I'm happy to share this uh, this moment with you so thank you all very much have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you in my next video bye bye